avoid super processed and ultra processed foods. And one of the reasons I put the term age here, and you might think I'm talking about getting older, that actually stands for advanced glycation end products. Now, I could talk briefly about that. That is another whole talk and why I think there's such, this is probably the reason there's such a strong link between diet and health. So a lot of these super processed foods produce more of these monster proteins in them during the processing um, uh, pathway, I guess. Um, even just cooking your own food in high heat, dry heat will create advanced glycation end products. You eat those, you absorb them into your system. Those things glom on to different proteins like collagen, like your lens protein, um, arterial wall proteins, and they alter the normal function of your normal proteins, induce inflammation, induce oxidative stress, and generally muck up all the normal functions of your body. So the, the fewer of these advanced glycation end products you can intake, the better, and the better off your health is. And I'm, I'm, I think that's the fundamental foundational link between all of this, but it, that's kind of a whole, not, a whole different talk, which I'd love to give one day. In olive oil, we talked about uh, monounsaturated fatty acid filled with phytochemicals and antioxidants and anti-inflammatory in and of itself. Here we are, the omega-3 to 6 ratio imbalance. We just talked about that. The phytochemicals and micronutrients. So everything, if you're eating three to nine servings of vegetables a day and two servings of fruits a day, think about the number of vitamins, flavonoids, terpenes, terpenoids, um, phenols, all of these different amazing antioxidant, anti-inflammatory little molecules that are out there naturally. You're putting them in your system to neutralize that car exhaust coming out of your mitochondria. So diets that are heavy in meat, or avoid carbohydrates, I think are detrimental, my personal opinion. Flavonoid intake, flavonoid is a type of phytochemical, is inversely related to cardiovascular death risk. So the more flavonoids you can put into your system, the less likely you're gonna die of heart disease and also other chronic non-communicable diseases. And then the strongest correlation was between the monounsaturated olive oil, polyunsaturated omega-3s like in salmon and herring and things, and the trans and, and saturated fats. So the more you can stay on the monopoly side with your diet and stay away from the trans fats and the big, thick, heavy fats, basically anything that is solid at room temperature, you want to try to stay away from, if, if that makes sense. Um, and I will say that 80% of deaths in our world are related to cardiovascular disease. There's a reason all a lot of the number one drugs are statins, things like that, that reduce cholesterol and try to reduce cardiovascular death. There's a reason cardiologists are killing it. There's a reason there's all of these stents being made and companies like Medtronic are making billions of dollars. It's because we're not eating correctly and we are basically filling their business model by avoiding monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, and eating too much of the trans and saturated fats. So you would think physicians would always prescribe diet and exercise first, right? But we don't. And that, that's why I'm doing this talk. All of this is in your own power. You don't have to take statins if you can control it with diet. I'm not saying stop your statins immediately, of course. I would never do that. But just start thinking about your if you're eating poorly, you basically, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to feel bad. There's no way you can't. 